Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. This is our first segment of the Guide to Home Care. Um, I'm Kim, and I'm just going to be here chatting with Missy today. Missy, I'll let you introduce yourself. I'm Missy Johnson. I am the Vice President of Home Care Services for Home Care Companions, uh, partner of Edgewood Healthcare. Thank you. So we're going to do a short little segment today to talk a little bit about what is home care and home health? Can you talk a little bit about what those things are? Absolutely. We are primarily home care. A lot of people get home care and home health mixed up. Um, Me. We are in the homes um, and we help with the tasks of daily living. So okay. Okay. more than non-medical. So like the taking to appointments, the helping get ready for you know, get up in the morning, get ready for bed, meal prep, you know, just a second pair of eyes, you know, kind of a partner with the family in the care of their loved one. Sure. Um, so how often do you guys go into the home? We have some people that were in there once every other week, just for kind of a welfare check. And then we have some that were in there 24 seven. So okay. some, some were in there every morning, helping them get ready, ready for bed. And usually the care plan grows um, based on the need. Like you might sign your parents up or you yourself might sign up for care like one day a week. And then you quickly realize, okay, this is what I need. Cause our goal is to help people age in place. Absolutely. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. And I think having, I didn't realize that scope of once every other week, all the way up to 24 hours a day. Um, that's a really big range. So really honestly can fit, fit almost anyone. Is there anything outside the scope of what you guys offer? Um, you know, even sometimes we blur the lines between home health and home care, as long as a lot of times, like, for example, if somebody comes home from a surgery and they have a wound that needs to be taken care of, normally we wouldn't take that on. Mm -hmm. But if they're receiving home health services, oftentimes it's home health that will train our caregivers to care for that wound rather than a family member. Okay. So as long as they're under the care of a doctor, we can follow some of those instructions. Um, but typically medical and we don't bill insurance. So if it's something that can be billed, we recommend that they take advantage of their home health that they're prescribed. Um, but then when that they're not able to use that anymore, that's when we come in and kind okay. of keep billing that so that they don't have to go to the hospital or a transitional care type setting. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. How, like when that uh, benefit ends that then that's a good segue in. And I feel like it's probably a good idea for people to contact you, even if they're not sure um, like you were saying, the lines might be blurred. It's not so black and white. Right. And I always say, have the conversation before you need it. You don't yeah. want to be making the decision of somebody coming into your home for help in an emergency situation, you know, know ahead of time. Like that's why that have that initial consult with us and then have us like once a month, you know, then you get to know our people, you get to know the system, you know, that you, Oh, I can call Missy and we can get this scheduled. And, you know, a lot of people are learning, you know, it, depends on you don't know what you don't know so until right. you have a family member that needs it you know you just kind of have that conversation early on I recommend yeah. that to everybody start I think that's great and you identify though deciding before it's you're urgently needing something and sometimes people I think make desperate decisions because they're just not sure or they just go with the first option because they don't want to keep looking around so right well and unfortunately too if you're making that decision in that emergency situation a lot of times you're beyond the level of our services already mm -hmm. where if we would have came in early on you might not have been in that emergency situation yeah. we might have identified some of the things and the reasons you ended up yeah in that situation well missy what if somebody wants to get a hold of you or get in touch with you guys what's the best way to do that Best way to do that is to, we have a website, an 800 number. I think we'll probably put a little blurb up in this, yep. where this is coming out, that information will be there. Um, all of our consultations are at no charge. No question's a bad question. I mean, we've heard it all. I've been doing this for 15 years plus. Ooh, that's scary. Um, so have the conversations. It's always good. Have us come in, have us talk. A lot of times you're who you're trying to get services for is reluctant. Sometimes just the face to face is all they need. Yeah, thank you. That's great. We will yeah. be um, sharing contact information after I'm done talking here of how to get in touch with Missy and her team. Um, thank you for joining me today and stay tuned for another segment on the guide to home care and learning more about what we have to offer. Thank you. Thank you. Um.